So, represent. I'm pitching my flow, you know. Keeping it real massive, large style, big wangles. Except my mind. I'm a diminutive kind of guy, but apart from that, I'm okay. It's not all about dick. I know, because I've never sucked it or fucked it. I've never been up anyone's asshole. Not even a woman. Not intentionally, anyway. A few missed strikes back in the day on a fair maiden, and there was a lot of tears, and I apologize for that, both me and her. I never wanted to go up the Brownie Canal for anyone. It's not because I'm a weirdo. It's not because I'm boring. It's because I'm not sick in the fucking head. You see what I mean? I'm prima donna of epic's form, rippling through the coulisse of everything tangible. Within a grooven moon, I am the serenade of divinity. I am the name that shames the world of pain, my friends. It's time. Time to look up at the main hoolie. Sit back and go, there are my pajamas. Which brings me to today's story. Today, I did something rather random, something out of the blue, not unaccustomed to entirely, but it was quite amusing in one sense. I was walking back from the pub, where I saw a family getting out of their cars in a road where I was on a path, and there were trees in the way, so they couldn't really see me, but through a gap in the trees I saw there was a family in close proximity to me and the atmosphere was silent. So what did I do? I burst into song, and I sang the following. I'm wearing my underpants. And that's all I sang. And I, it brought so much joy to my heart, thinking there was a random family of about four or five people meeting, saying goodbye to each other, and that sort of thing. And then, like in the Three Amigos, the singing bush burst into, I'm wearing my underpants. And I felt that was lovely. I felt it was lovely. It was quite funny. And out of the blue, and they weren't really probably expecting it. And in light of that, I am very pleased with my efforts. All right? They might even remember the singing bush for the rest of their days. Who am I to say otherwise? Just because I sang it doesn't mean I know the repercussions of such genius. Anyway, ain't got shit to bleed. The true situation of the matter, however, is according to the principles of greatness, I am amazing. There's no two ways about it. I'm thoroughly solid, thick as a brick, and made of chemicals which ripple through my sensorium like divinity itself. I am never shafted by anyone because they're all quite nice. I don't live in a slum because I'm very fortunate. I am not rude to human beings because I don't know who they are. I am never violent and I never seek fighting. Why would I? I quite like life and people, and I have no desire to sit here in a state of negative evil menace, desiring to punch the shit out of people, apart from maybe one person, and I've got three brother betrayers, right, only the three brother, well, maybe four, let's say four, four brother betrayers, they're not good. But I still don't desire them violence apart from maybe one, the truly evil Dark Lord one. He was scum. I don't like him. Not at all. But no one else has really bothered my crisps to really cause the dysfunction of morality by which to go out there gun-toting and blasting like a mofo. Do you understand? I think peace and charming quiet in the benevolent sphere 
of everybody's peace and glory and the military's comfort zones is a blessing unto our very reality and I have no desire to rock the boat. No, no. In fact, I want to improve the boat. Where there are holes, I'll patch them up. Where there is concern and fear, I will bring you peace. Where there is horror, I shall fight the demons. I am not scared. In fact, I'm chuckling. And in this, well, what is in this? What's in a giggle, little Barry Wonder? What's in a giggle, little Hermie friend? Are you little there? Oh no, no, Timmy. Yeah, you think it's all bullshit, don't you? It's all fucking bullshit. Up to 2019, Mr. Clark. When you as a customer took on any loans, mortgages, credit cards, store cards, catalogs, or higher purchases, your banks and lenders put something in place for you called PPI, Payment Protection Insurance. I've already had my PPI back, old boy. Yes, because this is not regarding the PPI money that's supposed to be paid to you, Mr. Clark. It's a totally different claim. You see, when you as a customer was paying towards your PPI, a small portion of your money might have been going towards commission without your, to form your banks or lenders without your knowledge. Now, this call today is not a sales call. It's not to sell you anything. It's not to sign you up for anything or to take your banking details. It's just to make sure the details we have on file for you is still correct as your claim is already going through the process. You've got to be joking, mate. You've got to be joking. Get out of my house and never call this number again. Wankers. Bitch and flow. That's how you treat the dodgy. You tell them to get lost and never come back again because they're up to no good. I don't like the sound of their bits and pieces, do you? No. So there's going to be a way, there's going to be a solution, and I'm the one who's going to coin it, and conjure it, and find it, and redeem it. I will not let this slide. What? I am me. And in that, I know me quite well. Quite well. Like a bucket of my own turd, I know me. Sitting in a rotting puke fest of idiocy. Rotting away like the flesh of naked scum. Wondering what is the point in anything. I am not a nihilist. I am a divine believer. And these are nut tattoos before you get good ideas into your head about not getting good. Uh, 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 Shut up, Clark, you stupid. It's not funny. Grow up. It's not funny. That's a little bit funny, but... <coughs> it's not really funny. It's very serious. Mental Health Day, Schizophrenic Mental Health Day, Awareness Day, was apparently yesterday. As a schizophrenic, I was not aware. This is not good. They are pushing the schizophrenic. Everyone's heard of Pride Week Month. Everyone's heard of BLM. Schizophrenic Awareness Day. Who knew? Hmm? Who knew? It was yesterday. No one fucking told me. No one was aware. Not even the schizophrenics were aware. Were being brushed under the carpet and being thought of as psychopathic hoodlums. We are not psychopathic hoodlums. And neither are we narcissistic psychopaths. We are human beings touched by the living God. And there's nothing wrong with that when you know your onions. No, sir. I know the Bible says don't mark your body, but don't worry. These are not permanent. And if they were, well, I wouldn't be here. I'd be dead. Because I'm not, I don't live like that, you know. I, I'm not one of those chaps, you know. I don't go out there looking for Barney's or being a knob. You know, I'm quite nice. Uh, I even write poetry on occasion. Sometimes I sing a mellifluous song. Only back from the pub today, I was walking through the streets 
and I burst into song. I can't remember what the lyrics were, but it was something like, Oh joy to you this blessed day. And this lovely old man walking his dogs went, What? I went, oh, nothing, I'm just singing a song to myself. He went, good for you! <laughs> I thought that was lovely. I thought that was great. And we get a lot of this stuff around Ringwood because we've got a lot of characters hidden in the shadows. No one knows who they fucking are, but they're really nice. Gentlemen, old, lots of old people, knackered, dying from a life of irrelevance, seemingly, because no one knows who they are. But they were all really sweet. I like the old people there. They were all right by me. My neighbours over there, fucking A. Just tremendous. Just lovely. I want to see them in heaven. And him. And them. And him. And grandpa. Well, not my grandpa, but someone else's grandpa. Or over there, three houses, legends. Anyway, so uh, enough whittling on about the, um, the neighbours. But, um... Well, I mean, what is the point and the philosophical essence to existence if I can't define it readily or easily? I mean, what are we here for? What are we doing? What do we think? Where are we going? Are you stupid? We're all lost on this ball of water and rock, rippling around a star of fire in an infinite seemingly universe of many fireballs. So fireballs must be quite powerful and important to the cosmos and life itself. Why does God like fireballs? Big, massive, gargantuan fireballs! That's what God has created in the universe, and there's a lot of them. I think it was partly based on a quantum replication system that augmented with using a continued series of creative events within a somewhat gaseous, matter-based environment, like a, a, a multi-user domain on a computer internet game of multiplayer, where the world just goes on and on and on, because they've really punched in the hard drive memory statistics, and therefore dark matter is memory of time. That's what I think anyway. And on that matter, I don't know if I can prove it. I can't prove it, but it makes sense, doesn't it? Because if if we're all here for a reason, God said, I'm God, let it be light. Uh, and there was light. Uh, I create the world, right? God is taking claim for creating all this. So, okay, uh, all right. Do we believe in God? Don't we believe in God? Well, I do believe in God because after prayer once, I got a result. And that was massive. In fact, I've done it twice, three times. A lady, but not a lady, God. And um, three prayers I've had answered immediately unto God. And so therefore I do believe in God, but don't try and be scientific about it because you'll never win. Not at this level of supernatural comprehension that I wield in considerable and well-raised clarity. Nevertheless, and ever the more, we must uh, keep going because if there is a goal, which I believe there is, because of the supernatural experiences I've had. I've nearly been killed by a succubus once as well. That was bad. But that wasn't God. That was uh, my mate's ex, who appeared in my bed in a golden sort of reality. And I could feel her, I could see her, I could touch her. And my neck got slammed back really violently by an invisible force. And it was like trying to break my neck off. Oh, that was bad. That was bad. Right, so don't go there, that's why you shouldn't cover your neighbour's wife. Not that they were married, and not that he was my technically my neighbour, he was my brother actually, one of my brothers. But I did, they weren't married, and it, I was just looking for a quick, quick wank so I could get to sleep. It was nothing, nothing really intense, that's probably why I survived. Because I wasn't obsessive or, or insistent about this sin. I just was trying to get my rocks off so I could go to Betty Bobo's. Anyway. That's another time and space. What is reality? Have you ever thought about that? What the dickens is this place called Earth? It is brilliant. Brilliant compared to Mars. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, well. Flying chips on the main ding dong. That's what I always say to all my people. Get out! And if you do come back, 
and give me a good reason why. And if you can't do that, stay out of my face. Because my face is precious. Precious like a gem. Gemstones, rubystones, gold, diamonds, pearls. I'm one of the myriad riches in reality form. Glistening in the donner's light shape shifting sphere of supernatural knowledge. I am truth, Dalax, personified under a divine god of knowledge, rippling through the supernatural realm of truth. If you don't believe that and can't take that and don't understand that, then you're going to have to replicate your biscuits. Because seriously, I know shit you won't believe. I don't think you're all completely slaves, but I think many of you are deluded by atheism. Atheism, my friends, is actually a hellfire sin in the apocalypse. And those who preach ardent atheism within an intellectual realm are not intellectuals. They are ignorati, personified, and non-deified, using mere mortal knowledge to try and explain an elaborate reasoning as to why there is no supernatural super god when there most definitely is. I've been touched on a number of occasions by supernatural forces of divine form. And I got haloed in 95, I had an OBE in 96, I've been visited by angels, or aliens, whatever you want to call them, higher beings of light. Uh, God healed my mind after prayer, God healed my heart after prayer. And I've seen prophecies. They're very scary actually, I don't like the prophecies. The, the future doesn't look good for me. Well, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying for me. For some people, but the, the future could be scary, that's why I live in the present. Like Buddha. Future can be what the future can be. The present is here and now, and that's where it is. It's present, it's peaceful, it's nice, and I'm there, chilling. Chilling. In this moment, right now, there is no pain. I am not in pain. In fact, I'm feeling quite chipper. And that is good. I like that. Thank you, God. No worries. I am not frightened. I am not suffering overly now. I oh, don't think I haven't suffered. I've suffered like a mofo asshole. Because I lived a life of sin in my teenage years. But, you know, with the all-merciful, wonderful, beautiful Lord, He has forgiven me after a penalty and a punishment and a, per a perdition that I had to go through. But now I feel redeemed, forgiven, and liberated from that chronic, conscious, ripping pain that I suffered under the act of sins. I am still allowed, you might find it funny, especially if you're Muslim, to drink and to smoke. And, well, I'm not allowed to smoke in bed. And I still haven't since the visitation of the angels. But whether smoking is a terrible sin, I'm not sure. I mean, it's got its pros and cons. The cons are that you might die early, but the pros, well, every smoker will tell you, oh, I love a fag. And some people, like me, also really enjoy joints, and they are fantastic. They really help the meditative, philosophical flow of cerebral wonderment within a solipsist air of beautiful reality dribbling on through time with colourful ideas and funny notions, all permeating through this space-time existence with our sensoriums glistening under the senses and we are reactive to all knowledge and we are receptive to the influence of higher forces, i.e. God and the angels. Don't think I'm not aware of evil. I have being tormented over the years by over 300,000 death threats in my mind from voices. This is why I'm schizophrenic, or classified as schizophrenic, because the neuroscientists do not understand religiously what is going on. I understand very little of what is going on as well, but that makes me equal to the neuroscientists with regard to schizophrenia. It's a very complicated condition. It's not a disease, you can't catch it, it's not contagious. 
but schizophrenia is a mental condition. And that condition can be most daunting, frightening, horrible, disturbing, and scary. But today it is not. Today it is not, my friends, because I have fully plowed the field of the Lord. And in this, today I am glad to be alive, and I am redeemed, and I am soulful, and I am in solace, and I am thankful for every aspect of the universe under God. I have said my peace, so take my peace.